So in this video, I sit down and have a conversation with John Lott uh, from Crime Research Center, who talks about the FBI statistics that basically cover the number of times that uh, legal firearm carriers actually stop shootings or mass shootings. And what John discovered in going over a lot of those numbers and research is that the FBI largely underreports the number of times that concealed carriers actually use firearms to stop shootings. Because I know a lot of people, when they have these conversations, people are like, oh, it rarely ever happens that people with, with concealed carry licenses are stopping mass shootings. But as John found out doing his own research against the FBI's research is that the FBI largely undercounts these situations. So that's why it happens, which is ironic because then in the same breath, whenever there is one of these cases that can't be refuted, they'll, stump, they'll jump up there and say, well, these are very, very, very rare. But to his credit and on the, on the continuous research that John Lott does, he was able to find a ton of other situations that were simply just not counted in these numbers. So I hope you guys enjoy the conversation and I hope you guys get a lot of information from this. And also I'm going to put a link to his website where he has each and every one of these cases listed from the research that he did on his own. Lot, I wanted to have you come on and talk about an article that you recently penned regarding the FBI statistics about self-defense shootings and basically how inherently wrong they are or miscalculated or doesn't cover as many shootings as we were led to believe. Right. Well, we put out a new report at the end of last week uh, at our website at crimeresearch.org that goes through the FBI's active shooter reports. So I was originally asked to look at the, these reports when I was working in the Department of Justice. And at the time, it was clear that there were a lot of problems with it. In particular, uh, they undercount defensive gun uses. So an active shooting uh, event is a case where guns fired in public, uh, not part of some other type of crime like a robbery or a gang fight over drug turf. Uh, they're mm. trying to get at the types of mass shootings that get people's attention, you know, in a mall or a movie theater where the whole point of the attack is simply to go and harm other people. These active shooting cases look at everything from one gun fired with one shot fired with nobody being shot all the way up to a mass public shooting. So over the nine years from 2014 through 2022, the FBI claims that there were 302 of these active shooting events and only 14 or about 4.6% of them were stopped by civilians legally carrying uh, concealed handguns. So when I was working at the Department of Justice, and even before that, I'd point out to the FBI that they had missed a number of uh, defensive gun uses. They've never corrected it. We've gone through and kind of have a more complete list now. Uh, you know, they spend millions of dollars, literally, on going through news stories to collecting their, their list that's there. Mm -hmm. We did this with only a few thousand dollars, so I don't make any claim that I found all the defensive gun uses that are there. Uh, but rather than their 14, uh, I think that there's over 150 of these. And so uh, rather than about 4.6%, I think it's about 40% of these active shooting cases were stopped by civilians with, uh, oh. who are legally carrying concealed handguns. But even more than that, when I was uh, in the Department of Justice, one of the arguments I had made is that you have to separate out those places where civilians are legally allowed to have guns and where they won't, these gun-free zones. Because you, yeah. you're talking about law-abiding citizens, you can't expect them uh, to stop attacks where it's illegal for them to have guns for protection. And in 2022, for example, if you look at the data for that year, uh, about over 60% of the active shooting cases were stopped in places where civilians were legally allowed to carry guns by people legally carrying concealed handguns. So that's a pretty dramatic difference from the 4.6% that they were claiming. And look, I, you know, police departments don't collect this data. They're relying uh -huh. on news stories. And one can go and talk about the biases that already exist with news stories uh, not covering defensive gun uses. But the, the problem is, and, and people can make mistakes and miss cases, but here you have a situation where they were told about uh, cases that they were missing earlier. Uh, I even have it in writing that they acknowledge that they missed a case, but they had never gone back and fixed these things. 
And, uh, you know, it's, so it's one thing to do this by accident. It's mm. worse, I think, when you've actually been told about the cases you've missed. And look, nobody needs to take my word for it. On our website at crimeresearch.org, right up the top, we have a list of all the cases that people have used uh, concealed handguns to s legally stop these attacks. <clears throat> you know, you can go, there's a link to each news story, so you can go and check it yourself to see whether or not it meets the definition of active shooting, not involving some other type of crime, uh, whether the gun was fired in public. Uh, you know, and I think that it's pretty clear um, what's going on there. And so, and the problem is it's just not that the FBI data is messed up. Uh, the mm. media relies on this a lot. Uh, and court cases around the country rely on these types of cases, uh, these, this data. And legislation around the country is based upon the data that the FBI has put together. So I've, I've kind of gotten to the point, I've been using FBI crime data for 40 years, but I've kind of gotten to the point where I'm really skeptical of a lot of the data that the FBI puts out, that it's not politically tainted in some way to go and uh, achieve whatever political goal somebody wants to have, and that uh, it makes a real difference in the debate. Yeah. So from the FBI's perspective, are they hiring out third parties to conduct these this research in order to determine how many cases cases there are of uh, defensive shootings that were stopped by civilians, or are they doing this on their own? Now they hire uh, some researchers at Texas State University uh, to go and do new searches. Police departments don't collect this data, uh, and so they, I, I don't know how much they've spent. I know it's mm -hmm. in the millions of dollars uh, to go and do these types of new searches there. and. Uh, the people at Texas State have kind of refused uh, my request for information on things. They, uh, earlier this year, I got Glenn Kessler at the Washington Post did uh, a review of this where he asked them about the cases that we had found. Uh, uh -huh. They came back and said, well, two of these shouldn't have been included, two of the 120 some that we had at that time. and. Uh, uh, they pointed to one where there was a shooting at a dentist's office. They said that it shouldn't be included because it involved a domestic dispute. Uh, a husband had gone to where his wife was working at the dentist's office and had started shooting people there. Uh, fortunately, he was stopped by a concealed carry permit holder. And so, you know, uh, it's what I pointed out is, look, here are 14 cases that you do include that involves some type of domestic dispute between a husband and a wife. You include all those. The only difference between the one that you exclude and the ones that you include is that the, what you exclude is a case where a uh, concealed carry permit holder stopped the attack that was there. Uh, they had one other case involving a strip club where uh, somebody was asked to leave. They'd gone and gotten a gun and come back. Uh, they were stopped by a person legally carrying a gun. Um, and they said that that shouldn't have been included because it was, they said it was retribution. Uh, and all I had to do there is to say, look, you have these cases involving bars or other similar places where somebody was asked to leave, came back with a gun and shot up the place. You included those. The only difference between that I can see between the ones you included and this one that you excluded was that the one you excluded involved somebody legally carrying a gun stopping the attack that was there. And so, you know, that's the only responses I've been able to get out of all the cases that we've shown there. Uh, if those are the two best examples that they have of ones that we included that shouldn't have been included, you know, it's not very obvious. And so... Uh, uh, but, you know, and the thing is, the media relies on these reports. Uh, last year when there was uh, the attack at the mall near Indianapolis, uh, where the uh, young man who stopped the attack, uh, you immediately had the AP, the New York Times, the Washington Post saying, well, you know, it's true in this case, uh, uh, somebody legally carrying stopped the attack, 
But you have to understand how incredibly rare, rare yeah. it is that this happens. And they pointed to the FBI report. I wrote, contacted the different reporters. Uh, the only one that I ended up having a conversation with was the reporter at the Associated Press. And he refused to correct anything. He said, look, I accurately quoted the FBI report. And my response was, look, I'm not saying that you inaccurately re quoted the FBI report. My point is, is that the FBI report is flawed. It's missing yeah. all these cases. And you don't need to take my word for it. I'm giving you these cases. I'm giving you the links to the underlying news stories. Just check a few of them. If you can find any of the ones that you check, that don't meet their definition, then tell me. Because otherwise, again, I don't require that anybody take my word for this. Uh, and, and people, again, I, I want people to go to our website at crimeresearch.org. It's mm -hmm. right up there at the top, the overall report and the list of cases that were missed. And, uh, you know, they, if they can explain to me why these cases shouldn't be included, I'll be very happy to listen to them. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting about that, too, is that I know not too long ago with um, CDC removing um, a lot of the defensive gun use stats from their website at the bequest of some of the anti-gun groups out there. How much of a fact, how much of that do you think played a part in the FBI kind of ignoring your corrections in terms of some of the, the shootings that they that they missed or didn't include? I mean, in the case of the Centers for Disease Control, you had gun control groups like the Gun Violence Archive uh, mm -hmm. was writing uh, the CDC. The Biden administration had kind of put uh, the Gun Violence Archive in, in touch with some of the top people at the CDC uh, to essentially lobby them on this issue. And one of the arguments that the Gun Violence Archive made was that uh, they needed to take down uh, the estimates on defensive gun uses because it was making it more difficult for them to go and pass the types of gun control laws that they wanted to go and get passed. And that just seems like a completely inappropriate argument uh, to go and bring up for this either, you know, uh, even to mention it seems yeah. inappropriate. But, uh, just, you know, the Gun Violence Archive is uh, a group, unfortunately, that the media relies on constantly for things like uh, estimates of the number of mass shootings and, and other data uh, there. Um, so, you know, uh, we, whether the FBI has had the same type of influence from gun control groups, I can't tell you. I have no yeah. knowledge about that. Uh, what I can say is that for years now, uh, they have uh, been having inaccurate reports. Uh, I've published things on it going back to 2015 on the errors that were there. and. As I say, I wrote up a report when I was at the Department of Justice. Um, so, I mean, they've been alerted to this many times over the years. And uh, even when you get them to admit that they've missed something, uh, they the refuse to fix it later on. But then, which is weird, because then they'll turn around. And when you do have a shooting that's stopped, that's so public that they can't refute, they'll then turn around and tell us, well, this is very, well, I mean, very, very rare. Even ones that even uh, some of the ones that they include, they misclassify. So, for example, okay. uh, the uh, White Settlement Church shooting near Fort Worth, Texas in mm -hmm. December 2019, uh, there was uh, a, somebody who is legal, a permit holder there, uh, who, former law enforcement type, who stopped the attack. Uh, I talked to him while I was at the Department of Justice. He said... Uh, uh, the minister said, look, if you have a concealed carry permit, you can carry. We'll just make you an honorary security guard. They got no extra pay. They got no extra training. In fact, they didn't even really keep track of who was carrying that day. Um, uh, the person I talked to who stopped the attack said he didn't know exactly, but maybe there was like 18 or 20 people carrying uh, that day. So that attacker really picked the wrong church to go <laughs> after. But the... Uh, um, but uh, the FBI, uh, you know, initial news reports classified it as a security guard stopping the attack. I remember. And yeah. the FBI, and uh, to be honest, I think that's one of the reasons why I got the news coverage that it did. Uh, as soon as they kind of found out that it wasn't a security guard, the news coverage kind of died out. They still had some on it. But uh, the FBI, 
classified as a security guard, and they still classified as a security guard stopping the attack, not a civilian. Yeah, no, and it's, I remember that very vividly because I remember initially when I first heard about the shooting and I heard it was about a security guard. I still reported on it, and I even stated it was a security guard. Um, and I think you actually mentioned it to me in private that that actually wasn't a security guard. Um, it was just an individual in the church who was carrying. And, you know, for me, I think it's incredibly disingenuous for, for them to keep coloring these type of situations like that, because then we can't have the honest conversation about how effective it truly is for people to be able to carry firearms and right. in, in places which are prone to be attacked. That said, at the same time, a point that I think a lot of people fail to realize, too, um, is the idea that, of course, there aren't going to be very many people who stop a mass shooting with their legally owned firearm if the place where they're at is a gun free zone. All right. right. Um, and then you're, you're not going to Seems like a simple stopped. point. Yeah. Seems like a simple point. We try it's kind of, to document those cases and have yeah. it on our website so people can download the file and look at it. Uh, but, you know, I don't. It, it seems pretty obvious to me. I think the fact that they will not even talk about uh, breaking that out uh, mm -hmm. is a problem and shows bias on their part. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, considering that, um, and I know you've mentioned it a couple of times in this conversation, but can you let people know where exactly to go to get the, uh, the research and the information that you guys have on your website? Well, thanks. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, People can go to our website at crimeresearch.org, crimeresearch.org, uh, and the very top posts uh, have our data write up and uh, have the list of cases. So people can go, again, I don't want anybody to take my word for it, then go to crimeresearch.org to double check it themselves. If, if people can find any of these cases that uh, shouldn't be included, that we've included there, I want to know. I mean, I think we've been very careful. And, and I have to say, there's a whole set of other cases where uh, attacks are stopped before shots are fired by the attacker. And we don't even include those in there. Yeah. Uh, there's another at least 27 that we could have included. And that's an example of where media is unlikely to even uh, cover these cases. If if an attack stopped without any shots being fired by anybody simply because somebody brandished a gun, uh, you rarely see media covering those types of things. So relying on media stories in order to identify these cases, you'll underestimate them. Uh, but again, uh, the FBI doesn't include those, so we don't because we want to use the exact same definition uh, okay, that yeah. the FBI used. But if you were to include attacks that are stopped by simply people brandishing guns uh, for these active shooting cases, you'd have to add at least another 27 onto it. And, uh, you know, that would make another big difference in the numbers. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, thank you very much, John, for coming on and um, informing people basically about this, because a lot of people probably would never hear about this or see anything about this other than what they get in the media. So now that they have a resource to go to, to kind of get kind of in the down and dirty in terms of the different cases where this happens more often. Um, and, I, and I think it's important from the standpoint that the more knowledge that people have about these, the better they can talk about and have these conversations out, you know, with family members and other people who are kind of on the other side or trying to figure out how they feel about it. Well, that's the reason that, why you're important, people. you know, to help get this type of stuff out. You know, there are people Absolutely. that will see your podcast uh, that will learn about, you know, our website uh, and learn about this data that wouldn't hear about it otherwise. We spend a, a lot of time putting these things together, but mm -hmm. it doesn't do us any good if uh, if people don't go and check it out. And, and again, I want people to be convinced themselves so that they can, you know, not just say I heard, but can say, look, I read the stories. Uh, you know, I went to crimeresearch.org. I read the stories. And yeah, they fit the definition. And we have links to the FBI reports there so people can double check the definitions there themselves too. But thank you, I really appreciate your time. No problem, thanks. Thanks for taking the time out. Guns aren't political. That's why I need your help getting this message to spread on YouTube by clicking the thumbs up button, leaving a comment to let me know what you think of the video, then subscribing to the channel. But most importantly, click that bell symbol. For products featured in this video, click the links in the description.